some strange reason there are bands that I just never talk about on this channel. Welcome classic rock fans to a short video where I discuss briefly uh, certain artists that I've never spoken about on this channel, not because there's anything wrong with them. And it's a bit befuddling as to why I don't speak about them really, but uh, nevertheless here's a list of honourable unmentionables. By the way in the comments uh, do list some bands that you would like me to talk more about. The first band I want to talk about is Free. I love this band yet I never speak about them on this channel. So I remember back in the day, Free would be spoken about in the same breath as Led Zeppelin and Deep Purple. Well, maybe not in the same breath, but they'd follow hard upon, I think. But they seem to be drifting away from public consciousness these days. A few years ago, there was a box set called Songs of Yesterday, I think it was. Wonderful set. I really enjoyed it. Uh, but then I saw an, saw an interview, I think it was in Q Magazine or Mojo, it was with Andy Frazier, it was shortly thereafter, and he talked about a 10-disc set being compiled, which included all the albums, concerts, outtakes, everything you wanted by free was going to be in this set. And me, like a complete numpty, went and sold my box set and my free CDs in anticipation of this coming out, which it never did. Did anyone else see that interview and that where he talked about this box set, or was I just hallucinating? The next artist that I, I never speak about is John Martin. I love John Martin, that booze-addled voice of his. All those slurry half-words that don't quite morph into a coherent sentence. It's just fantastic. Anyone interested in the island story? I mean, I read uh, Richard Thompson's uh, autobiography recently. People like Nick Drake and um, Sandy Denny, of course, and John Martin. Although he doesn't seem to be spoken about that much. In fact, I have this humongous set. Look at this, the Island Years. I think it's got everything on it. John Martin, the Island Years. I love this set. Yet for some reason I never never speak about him on my channel. Uh, I, I must admit I primarily love uh, Bless, this, Bless the Weather and uh, Solid Air and I just can't get enough of Big Muff of course. But uh, I never do a critique of uh, John Martin or his work. David Gilmore actually played guitar on one of his albums, if I'm not mistaken. Another band that I love is R.E.M., but hardly ever speak about them. I have done an unboxing video, I think, on my channel, but I've never spoken about them or communicated my love for this band. Um, I, this band kind of drifted away, I think, after I think it was Bill Berry left. But I really enjoyed the Up album. I really liked Up. In fact, I saw them on that tour. A lot of people felt that this band went downhill after signing for Warner, which I, I don't agree with. I really enjoy Michael Stipe's phrasing, very much so, and uh, that subterranean, barely audible mumble of his. Uh, he did a, an interpretation of uh, David Bowie's Ashes to Ashes, which is on YouTube. Go and check that out. It's fabulous. Next band is Camel. I hardly say anything about Camel. I think they have featured in one of my top ten rankings somewhere. A lot of you complain, um, a lot of you have got the ump, I could say, uh, that I don't talk about Camel enough, and you'd be absolutely right. This was one of the bands that uh, my brother introduced me to. My brother introduced me to a few cool bands, really. This is one of them. Now, this is an album that's not often spoken about in glowing terms, but I absolutely adore it, really do. My uh, father served in Berlin as a military policeman. This was 1950s, I suspect. This was before the wall went up. It was all separated into zones. And my mother was in Berlin. This is where she worked as a, a nanny. There she was English, but she worked as a nanny in Berlin. So they spoke very um, authoritatively on that kind of era of, of Germany and the Vopos and things like that. And it, it, so that album really has... Um, uh, I suppose a lot of emotional resonance for me. I absolutely adore it. I love the live thing they did as well, pressure points. I used to always be amused by Andy Latimer's facial expressions when he played. He's such an emotional player, I think. My mother always used to say he looks like he's uh, doing battle with a particularly troublesome toffee. Another artist I never speak about is The Small Faces. The Small Faces. I mean, I adore that band. I love Kenny Jones' drumming. I spoke to him in an interview recently. I think you've seen that video. And Steve Marriott, what a voice. That soulful yop of his. It was just absolutely extraordinary. Billy Joel, another artist I've done very little on on this channel. Very little, which doesn't in any way reflect my love of him as an artist. Another band 
artists, I should say, that uh, I came to know through my brother. My brother had all his albums on cassette tape, we used to listen to Street Life Serenade, 52nd Street. I saw him in the Stormfront tour, but I never saw him after that. I mean, he's playing a gig this year in Cardiff, I'd love to go to that, but uh, it's not the ticket price, it's getting a hotel in Cardiff, it's just uh, this dynamic pricing just kills you. But I'm certainly going to do a review of one of his great albums, I think possibly 52nd Street, as that, that is my favourite. Styx, ditto everything I said about uh, Billy Joel. Um, my first introduction to this band was Mr. Roboto, perhaps not the best of introduction. Nevertheless, I enjoyed it, the theatricality of it all. It was later that I got into Paradise Theatre, Cornerstone, Pieces of Eight, love Pieces of Eight. And uh, that live album, I think my brother had the live album on vinyl, I think it was Caught in the Act, wasn't it? So I used to listen to a Styx an awful lot and still, still love them. Uh, but I've never, I don't think I've ever spoken about them on this channel. I would love there to be a proper remastering and reissue program regarding Styx, but it doesn't seem to be happening any day soon. Supertramp is another band that doesn't get the love it deserves, certainly on this channel anyway. I uh, love Supertramp, I think Crime of the Century is their best album. I went to see Roger Hodgson uh, a few years ago and that was wonderful at the Albert Hall. I did have a ticket to go and see Supertramp on their last tour, but it was cancelled due to Rick Davies getting unwell, becoming unwell. Uh, I've not heard anything about him since then. I don't know how he's doing, to be honest with you. Last but not least, I'd like to talk about Paul Simon. Um, a huge fan of Paul Simon. On my Patreon Zoom call, we often uh, start talking about Paul Simon. And I'm a big fan of his later material. I think some of his later albums have been extraordinary. So Beautiful, So What. Fantastic album. My favourite Paul Simon album, Stranger to Stranger, which was his last album before the Psalms record. There was that blue thing he did, wasn't it? But that was just a reworking of his material. But Stranger to Stranger, I think, is is wonderful, wonderful album. I love some of his later work. And uh, Seven Psalms I'm enjoying, but it's, um, it's taking a while to bed in with me, to be honest with you. But it's still, it's still a wonderful listen. But one of my favourite songs by Paul Simon is questions for the angels i think it's from his so beautiful so what album do go and check that one out anyway this is just i like to think interesting sort of throwaway video just to check in with you all and anyway, i'll leave you with my closing salvo which is hope you're well staying safe and of course that you keep listening